How are you YouTube? This is Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review. It's been a little while since I've done an English beer so I have another one for you today. These ones have been appearing actually quite a bit in the Scottish supermarkets recently and I've heard they're quite good so I decided to pick this one today. So this is the Adnams Ghost Ship and my logic into picking this particular Adnams beer was the fact that it had a pirate ship on it. I mean who doesn't love a bit of the old uh, swashbuckling pirates? A lot better than the Somali shite that we're seeing today. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews I'll just take you through a little bit of a history of the brewery and tell you a little bit about the company but if you are simply just interested in the tasting of the beer then feel free to fast forward towards the last few minutes of the video and you will catch that particular segment but anyway um, as I mentioned this is an English regional brewery from Southwold in Suffolk which is in the southeastern part of England just a little bit north of London where you get the the bit where Norwich is that kind of sticks out a little bit and it's just right in the middle of that particular region but the production of this brewery is around 85,000 barrels per year so it's a fairly large uh, scale it's a fairly large scale brewery. But the company was founded in 1872 by George and Ernest Adnams and the company was then incorporated in 1890 and it's remained as an independent company since that time. But Pierce Loftus and his brother Jack joined the brewery in 1902 and to this day both the Adnams and the Loftus family have members on the board. Today Jonathan Adams is the chairman and Simon Loftus is the non-executive director. But the company interestingly had a tradition of delivering beer to the six pubs in the small village of Southwall by horse and dray. That's just a little cart eh, for those of you who are not familiar with the term. Eh, but they were doing this until 1953 and they also did it between 1970 and 2006. But this ended with the construction of the new eh, distribution depot three miles away from the brewery. And in 2004 the company actually purchased the land for this distribution centre in the neighbouring village of Raiden which, eh, and the building was actually nominated for a sustainability award from the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors, interestingly enough. But in 1990, to celebrate their 100 years of it as a public company or their incorporation, however you want to do, uh, describe it, the brewery founded the Adnams Charity and a percentage of the company's annual profits are basically used to support worthwhile causes in the local area. They use a 25 mile radius of their, uh, their brewery for this to, to decide who they donate to. But interestingly, in 2009, the company also signed a five year deal with Ipswich Town Football Club to supply the beers at the Portman Road Station. Stadium. I believe they took over uh, from Green King Pubs who'd, owned the, who'd had this deal for about 14 years but the brewery run a number of pubs and they supply cask ales to all other pubs and these beers can actually be quite found as I mentioned quite widely in UK supermarkets they've actually come uh, very widely available in Scotland and there's a whole variety of these ones as well but I've got a list of all of them here for you um, this is a member of the regular range, range which also includes Broadside which is a bitter, Explorer which is a golden bitter, Soul Star which is a low ABV amber ale, Southwold bitter and uh, Topaz Gold which is a golden ale. They have seasonal beers which includes uh, English Red Ale, one called Extra Fat Sprat which is an amber summer ale, Crystal White Beer which is a golden wheat beer, May Day which is a golden ale, one called Mild, um, Old Ale which is a cold weather beer it's described as, Oyster Stout which is a winter stout, out, regatta which is a golden summer ale, tally ho which is a barley wine and yuletide which is their Christmas seasonal beer but they also have a number of these ones and they're described as the bottled range as well. They have broadside which is a strong ale, I'm sure I've seen that one. They have east green which is described as being a carbon neutral beer. The bottle has something like, I think it was only 12, it was 12% recycled glass and stuff like that in it. Uh, they have gun hill which is a dark mild beer, uh, lighthouse which is a traditional pale ale, spindrift which is a golden bitter and you can also get the ones I mentioned before, tally Ho, the Bitter and Explorer. You can also get them in the bottles as well. But anyway, let's get on to the tasting of this beer. I believe actually as well they also do some uh, international beers that are only sold internationally, but I'll look into that uh, more for my next video on this one. But this is a 4.5% pale ale. It uses American hops and it's malted with uh, pale ale, cara and rye crystal malts. I'll just let you have a little look at the uh, at the bottle there. As, I, as you could probably see earlier, it has a bit of a ghost ship on it, which I thought was cool. And it says on the back of this one, it's inspired by the eerie wrecks of old smuggling ships around the Suffolk coast. This ghostly pale ale has an assertive uh, pithy bitterness with a malty backbone and a lemon and lime aroma. But yeah, it's a nice looking bottle and stuff like that, as you can see, just for those of you interested in the bottle cap. There you are, it's just a kind of simple one with the Adnams logo on it. There is a bit more of a story to this beer as well, actually, that I took notes on. Um, but it says the beer is inspired, as I said, by the most haunted pub in the UK at the most haunted village. And this is the Bell Pub in Walberswick. And apparently the shores, as it, as it says on the bottle, are littered with the wrecks of smuggling, uh, smuggling ships from a bygone era. The recipe apparently was adapted from a beer that they originally called the Dead 
deathly pale ale and that was produced as a centenary ale and the label the original label actually had skulls and crossbones on it but at the last minute this label that they produced uh, was pulled and the beer name was then changed to the centenary ale although apparently the fact uh, despite this label being pulled there were a few bottles did manage to escape into circulation with the original label on it with the skull and crossbones and one of these apparently is in the cabinet at the Red Lion pub in Southwold which should be quite cool to see actually I don't know it doesn't mention why exactly they pulled this label and decided to rename it the centenary ale but who knows but anyway let's get this guy open and get on with the tasting here quite looking forward to trying this one my first pirate beer if you like there we are but yeah getting a little bit of a, a smell coming off this one see it's actually quite dark for a it looked quite dark when it was coming out there for a pale ale it's quite a nice wee brownie colour it's quite a copper pale ale actually it reminds me a little bit of the Sierra Nevada one in terms of the colour but let's just get the rest of this guy out and we'll take a better look as you can see okay alright so as you can see it's quite a transparent sort of coppery amber colour a little, little nice yeah, coppery tint to it I would say there's a finger of head on it it's got some big bubbles it's a bit of a chunky head on this one actually I would say but yeah nice looking beer there's n uh, some big bubbles kind of floating up there's a fair little bit of carbonation visible in that shine it up to the light the colour kind of stays the same still that coppery one you're getting in terms of the aroma here I'd say citrus fruits on the top actually in the aroma but there's some light malts in there as well there's actually got quite a bit of a hint of breadiness and caramel in this. The citrus, as you can see, I can smell the the sort of difference between the the lemon and the lime in here. You can see how the the lime in it is actually influencing the the fruit aromas off it. But yeah, getting that lemon and lime kind of citrusy feel from it. Some there's some light malts in there with a little bit of bready character and some. I would say some sort of brown sugar element too, kind of caramel and things like that. Maybe just a little hint of sort of a floral pininess if you like, but let's give this guy a taste and see what it's like. Mm, it's very, very light actually. It's actually very, very clean in the taste. The malts are coming out first in this one, which is actually quite surprising for an IPA. Usually you get the fruity hoppiness up front, but the malts are actually the ones that come up first in this one. You're getting the kind of bready caramel flavours from that, maybe just a hint of floral character in there. But this is kind of subsiding to a bit of a bittersweet kind of mix. And that kind of mix, you're getting the citrus lemon and lime flavours coming out a little bit. This is a very unusual taste in pale ale. It's quite nice, very, very clean. But it's very unusual in the fact that the malts are coming up are coming up first. You're getting that bready, uh, caramelly character in there. Maybe just a little hint of florals, but then the citrus and uh, the lemon and lime flavours are coming out from the hops after you get that malty entrance to it. But there's maybe just a little hint of sort of pine needles in this one that kind of subside towards the aftertaste. There is a sort of lingering hoppy citrusy bitterness uh, towards the finish on this one. Yeah, on the aftertaste you're getting the hoppy bitterness. It opens up with the malts and then the bitterness kind of comes up with the fruity flavours coming out and that remains sort of towards the finish on this one. very unusual in that, as I say, that the malts open up for the IPA. Usually you get the fruitiness out of there first, but this is quite, it's quite nice to have something a bit different actually from the from a, from a pale ale. In terms of the mouth, this is a very, very light IPA, or pale ale, sorry, I shouldn't call it an IPA. It's a very, very light one on the flavour. It's only got a little bit of a light carbonation. That comes to you as soon as you take it in. It makes it quite crisp actually. This one's a very, very drinkable beer, it's a bit of a thirst quencher actually but it's, as I say it's very nice and unique in the fact that the malts uh, are the things that come out first and then it opens up into the hoppiness afterwards I've never actually had a pale ale that's actually 
uh, done that for me before, but that's it, this is nice, and as I say, it's quite a unique thing. But anyway, I hope this uh, beer review has been quite informative for you. This is definitely a good one that's worth the try, simply due to the fact that it's um, that it has that difference where the malt opens up the flavour and then the hoppy uh, flavours kind of come after. It's unusual in that sense, so it's definitely worth a try. For those of you watching inside the UK, you can pick it up in a lot of UK supermarkets, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. Uh, but I hope the beer review has been informative for you. I'm going to go away and enjoy the rest of this one now, but I do recommend that you give this one a try. It's quite cheap and it does have a nice taste to it as well. As I say, it's unusual, but hopefully this has been informative for you. I'll be back tomorrow with another American beer. It's been a little while since I've done any American beer, so I think it's about time to do another one again. But thanks again for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff, but you've been watching Goddard Radio Moscow with another beer review. Thanks again. I'll catch you soon.